Hello, this is Mr. Craig, and I want to discuss the answers to the homework from day five. All right, question number one it says the atomic mass for sulfur is given in the periodic table as 32.06, and what's not given there is units, which is grams per mole. Yet no single atom of sulfur has a mass of 32.06 AMUs. Explain how the atomic mass is possible, or how this atomic mass is possible. Um, hopefully, from the examples video, we do I discussed this, um, and we know that there has to be at least two naturally occurring isotopes for sulfur. In other words, no element is going to have a 0 .06. So again, the atomic mass is the average of all the isotope masses. So um, even though on the periodic table it says that it's 32.06, uh, do realize that this is just an average of all the isotopes. So, and again, remember isotopes deal with a different number of neutrons um, within the different atoms. Okay? So hopefully you knew that one. Number two, uh, very, very similar to the example. Uh, I think it was the first example. It says an element consists of the following percentages with the following masses. Calculate the average atomic mass and identify the element. Now, I didn't have you identify the element in the examples, but what you would need to do is go to the periodic table after you finish. So we'll do that here in a moment. All right, so again, you have all your percentages and all your AMUs. So what I would hope that you would do is do the calculation. And again, there's more than one way to solve this problem. And I didn't discuss the other way to solve this problem. So if you know of another way, that's fine. Just again, that the, the average should turn out or your final answer, which you have here, at least what I have, should be somewhere between 2.03 and 2.09. So, and I get 207.235. And then when we go to the periodic table, and again, that's AMUs, but that's for one single atom. So if I had a whole mole of those, now it's grams per mole. So going to the periodic table, 207, and what was the answer again? 207.235. And the best answer is actually the lead here, PB. Okay, since there are no other t elements with the mass of 207, and even though the 23, I'm sorry, the 0.235 is not given there, that would be your best choice. Okay. Uh, number three, calculate the mass of 4,000 atoms of iron. So again, we want to identify what is given here in the problem, and then the question wants us to calculate the mass. So always start with what was given, or what is given. So in this case here, we have 4,000 atoms of iron. Can, and it, what I did was, I already worked this out, and hopefully you're just checking your answers here. But if you're given atoms, then we want to move atoms diagonally. Okay. So we want to get rid of the unit atoms so we can get moles. And then since the problem wants to know the mass, we have to go from atoms to moles, and then moles to grams. So you'll take the moles of iron and do the same thing by moving it diagonally. So we cancel out the units, atoms, and moles, and we're left with just grams. Now, my calculator gave me this value, but there's really only one sig fig in this. Remember the four in the 4,000, okay? So again, hopefully nothing really new there. Uh, aluminum metal is produced by passing electric current through a solution of aluminum oxide, which is given there dissolved in molten cryolite, which is given there. Calculate the molar masses of the two substances. So again, however many of each of the substances you have, you have two aluminums plus three oxygens, add those up and get your mass. Now again, this is, if you're looking for the molar mass, would, these units would be grams per mole, so you'd have mole also on that. Okay, and I didn't include that on there. So, you should have mole on there. Because what we'll do is we'll we'll do something with those calculations later on. Okay. Number five. Ascorbic acid or vitamin C is an essential vitamin. It cannot be stored by the body and must be present in the diet. What is the molar mass of ascorbic acid? And then part two. Vitamin C tablets are taken as a dietary supplement. If a typical tablet contains 500 milligrams of vitamin C, how many molecules does that tablet contain? So the first question wanted you to 
um, determine the molar mass. Okay, so we have your formula here. So C6H8O6. Okay, so there's your molar mass around 176.12 grams. And again, that's per mole. Uh, the next part wanted you to convert the milligrams into molecules. So what we need to do is we need to take our milligrams, convert it to grams by moving the milligrams diagonally. We need to convert milligrams to grams because I don't have a conversion that converts milligrams to moles. And then once we have our grams, then we're going to move that diagonally. So we can cancel out grams. And again, remember uh, milligrams and grams, which one's bigger? There's one gram. There's a thousand milligrams in there. And then the molar mass for the vitamin C, we just calculated up here. So we have that value we can plug in. Once we have our number of moles, if we stopped right here, that would tell us how many moles of vitamin C, but it wants to know how many molecules. So we're going to take that unit mole and move it diagonally again. So now we can convert those moles into molecules. And this is Avogadro's number, which will always be provided for you. So if you forget that. Um, and again, anytime that we see mole within the problem or the unit mole, oftentimes we're going to make that one. There's a few exceptions. And you won't see that exception today. All right. Uh, number six, how many moles are present in the following samples? Uh, we have 150 grams of iron 3 oxide. Probably the first thing that we need to do is write the formula. So iron 3 oxide, well we obviously have iron and we have oxygen. So what's the charge on the iron? That's right, plus 3 and the oxygen, negative 2. Is that balanced as written? No, so we'll definitely need to have some subscripts. So we'll put a 3 there and a 2 there. So that means we've got 2 and 3. So we have our uh, correct balanced equation, or I'm sorry, balanced formula. So you have your iron oxide, or I'm sorry, iron 3 oxide. So there's the formula that we're going to work with. So we're given grams, and we can go right to moles. It's a one step problem. So grams of iron 3 oxide. And again, there's the molar mass, which has not been calculated for you. But if you want to calculate it and then plug it in, that's fine. Uh, just remember on molar masses, do not round. Actually, never round any number until it's the final answer. Uh, if you have 1.5 times 10 to the 20 molecules of sulfur trioxide. Now, the nice thing about sulfur trioxide is uh, I have a Greek prefix, which tells me that I'm looking at... That's right, a molecular compound. So I have a, I have a non-metal with a non-metal. So we don't care about charges. So sulfur trioxide. And what does the tri mean again? That means we have three of those. So there's my formula for the compound that's given here. Uh, but we really didn't even need to know that because we're just going from molecules to moles. And as we worked out in an earlier problem, uh, converting molecules so moles is pretty simple because in one mole we have Avogadro's number of molecules. Okay, so just a good little calculator problem there. All right, number seven. Um, aspartame is an artificial sweetener that is 160 times sweeter than sucrose, which is table sugar, when dissolved in water. It is marketed as NutraSweet. This molecular formula for aspartame is given there, C14H18N2O5. So calculate the molar mass for the aspartame. So add up the molar masses, multi I'm sorry, you can do the calculation hopefully for aspartame. Okay, and again that is all in grams per mole. So, oops. So, oh, whoa. so mole. Okay, so when we get ready to use that value, we'll have that there available for us. Uh, how many molecules of aspartame are present in 15 grams of aspartame? So again, we're given grams, so we need to go to molecules. So you need to convert the grams into moles. So you get your molar mass, which you calculated up above here. And then convert the moles into molecules, and you're done. So around 3.07 times 10 to the 22 molecules. Okay. Letter C, how many atoms of nitrogen, and again, this is really important, how many atoms of nitrogen are in a 3.7 gram sample of aspartame? OK, 
Okay. Well, you're given 3.7 grams of aspartame. We need to convert those grams into moles. So we're going to slide the unit grams diagonally. And you're given the molar mass, or you calculated the molar mass earlier on. Convert the moles into molecules. So we find out how many molecules we have. And then once we know how many molecules, we have to look at the problem and find out, well, how many nitrogens are there in every molecule? Well, there's two. That's why I have a two atoms of nitrogen. So 1.5 times 10 to the positive 22 atoms of nitrogen. Letter D, what is the mass in grams of 1.0 times 10 to the 11 molecules of aspartame? So it wants to flip it around here. So we have our number of molecules, so we need to convert the molecules into moles. So again, it's all about moving your units around. And again, molecules slide diagonally. We have one mole from that point, and then convert those moles into grams. And that mass, again, is what you calculated right up here in part A. Okay, so around 4.9 times 10 to negative 11 grams. Uh, hopefully the homework was pretty easy for you. I don't think we did anything too amazing here, especially if you uh, did this in general count. Hope this video has helped.